Oh Man. god, I just said that. I, I know. Think I, I felt I'm, dirty all over bad. too when I said it, so I think we both need to take showers after this. <laughs> Either that or, you know, cast an amazing game where there's lots of kills. And uh, I we, we can for redeem that ourselves. Because taking showers would require me to get out of my chair, and I don't intend to do that until I go to bed. <laughs> well, and then we'd miss out these great games. Absolutely. Yeah, I'd, I'd really like to see T2, you know. I, I don't want to sleep tonight. Let's, let's let's go to three games. And I do want to sleep tonight, but I'm on the West Coast, so I'm an hour earlier than Gabby, so <laughs> I'm still okay with them going three games. I think we've seen that uh, Ravenite and Targon have relatively similar pools. Uh, Targon, of course, is known as a little bit of a Nasus player. Um, he, he's been known to do that from time to time. <laughs> but uh, Nasus obviously has his own problems in high-level 5v5 play, and it looks like even without the bans, they've just been kind of shifting away from the Nasus. <laughs> Which is right. okay, um, but I mean, just looking at the master tree, we see a lot of the same champions for Ravenite as we do for. Uh, well, I Targon. feel like Ravenite. Ravenite has a bit broader of a champion pool. I, I agree. Um, I he, think he does like his tanky top laners. Um, you know, he likes like some really cheesy stuff like Tom Kench. Um, but you know, he'll he'll play a, a wider variety. I feel. I, whereas, I agree. I, I also think we're more likely to see some carry top laners coming out from Ravenite than we are from Targan. Although I agree. Targon's Cassiopeia is also relatively well known, although Cassiopeia top has kind of fallen out of the meta since tilting TSM at MSI. Right. All right, so we're getting, starting to get into bands. Uh, similar bands, entirely uh, expected at this point. Um, I am expecting Hypebot to toss in a uh, Fiddlesticks band. Uh, simply because that is going to directly affect T. Skuzzy, I feel, uh, quite a bit. Uh, <laughs> and we get the butt hurt ban. Malzahar is going to be taken away from our Chaotix. He will have to uh, transition to one of his other mid laners this game. Though so his Victor, of course, is incredibly strong, so I wouldn't be surprised to see that stay up. Tempest Life loses the Nidalee. Which yep. is not, I mean, if it's not broke, don't fix it. Oh, press us. No, you you don't you don't say it like uh, that. That that is press us. That's disappointing. Nobody nobody likes Malzahar, but no one likes language like that either. Homophobia is bad. You you shouldn't be homophobic, Pressless. I'm calling you out. Behind your back, even. <laughs> Yo. The Morgana ban continues to come down. I I don't really understand what we're seeing with that ban. Yeah, especially since uh, it was apparent that they really wanted to first pick. Oh, Ooh, interesting! Fiddlesticks. The comes Fiddlesticks through. is up for T Scuzzy, <laughs> and <laughs> T Scuzzy rushes in to jokingly not actually pick Fiddlesticks first, which would be a very silly first pick, given I don't think anyone's going to be contesting it, unless. Hypebot Unicorn has a smurf that I'm unaware of and has been practicing fiddlesticks for this very moment. Alright, they are picking up Fizz. Close to fiddle, you know. DZ, it's close enough. Um, so one of the nice things about that pick, though, is it has a lot of flexibility to where it can go. Um, right. I mean, obviously, Elio plays Fizz in the mid lane, which is sort of where he started. But at the same time, Tempest Life has a good amount of Fizz played in the jungle. I'd be shocked to find out that Pressloss doesn't play Fizz top lane. I mean, I think the question on all of our minds, though, is whoever does actually play Fizz... AD They or do AD. have Cottontail Fizz, right? <laughs> if not, I should get it. Pressloss has one ranked game played as Fizz, so I might be a little surprised to see that go top. Once All right, again, and we see we... the flex pick again from Nautilus, and Jinx is that, that late game hyper carry from Cyber Sage. I, yeah, I think I wouldn't be too surprised to see that pick go down to support this time, but I also wouldn't be shocked to see it go back to the top lane too. 
uh, they they've really liked playing around this Nami, and it had some very effective plays last game. Yeah, and they used it really well in lane too, where they're able to use that sustain against a um, you know poke based support to stay relevant in lane. You know, the, there is the the whole eternity of supports in the bot lane, uh, where you have um, poke beats out all in, beats out sustain, beats out poke. Um, so Nautilus is that flex pick, so that if you know they do see uh, a sustained support in the bot lane, it enables them to to have that all in comp. Otherwise, it allows them to have that Nautilus in the top lane as that flex pick and go with the sustained support against something poke. All right, so it looks like the option of Fizz going top has been effectively ruled out, unless T Scuzzy has a pocket support Scion. Which... Hey, do not do not discount the support Scion. That is it not is... me discounting the support Scion, just expressing dubiousness that T-Scuzzy plays it. That's fair. Uh, as someone who, who enjoys playing the support Scion, um, it's, it's a very niche pick and very much depends on the support. And given that, like, it's a, against novel support, it's great. Uh, basically against any kind of tanky all in um, you know scion is just as tanky as all of those characters um, and has a lot of of CC and as well as just innate damage um, and even if you die it's hey you are then wailing on faces for you know another five ten seconds yep um, and, and but... another another good aspect of that pick is if uh, hypebot tries to counter with the Maokai pick. They just have to bring out the Lumberjack Scion skin, and they've got him counterpicked. <laughs> this, this is true. Although, you know, Nautilus's anchor is bigger than that axe. That is true. I mean, I didn't support... I mean, I, it's probably not going to be relevant to this game, but didn't support Scion kind of fall off even from his niche status when his E got nerfed, his E damage got nerfed down a little? Uh, it, it does make him a lot weaker. Um, and to be fair, as someone who really enjoys playing Scion support, outside of the niche where he is okay, he's horrible. He, he has very little poke, um, his mobility is poor, um, and some of his, his CC can be dodged. So I guess, like, poke champions, um, or poke supports, you know, Morgana, um, Zyra, Velkaz, Lux, any of those things will just destroy a Scion simply because he cannot get in and do what he needs to do. So I I really hope that's not a support Scion, but I really hope that's a support Scion. I know what you mean. And, and this Cyber is Sage why is client demonstrating picks why client suck. picks are better. Or sorry, no, this is why pick. this is why chat picks suck because Hypebot is very graciously protesting chat picks by taking forever with theirs. Yes, the uh, in-game client, you know, you you get that time limit, which I feel is a really important aspect of this game. You know, given that, um, you know. You have to come come in prepared. You have less time to think about things. There, it's that innate pressure of, you know, thinking under pressure as opposed to in ch chat. It's well, what about this? Well, what about that? You start getting debates, and it can easily just drag on. And we get our chaotic. We'll be getting his victor, or so I'm assuming, if they ever learn how to spell victor with a K instead of a C. Uh, <laughs> Hey, they're just trying to start a glorious revolution. They here. they also pick and up the Gragas. That was very very successful for Liam in the last game. We're seeing a very very similar comp to the one that uh, Hypebot played last game, which you just know setting what? out the victor for the um or the Malzahar for the victor, and quite frankly, that's going to fill in a similar. Uh, kind of void. You know, Victor is going to be able to have similar high level amounts of wave clear. Um, he's going to bring a little more in terms of team fight, uh, simply because he has a bit more AoE damage than Malzahar um, and a little less pick. But that said, I feel like Victor is going to work into the siege comp a lot better than Malzahar did. Um, you know, sure, Malzahar had that, that pick comp 
capability for when one person got out of uh, position. However, the victor is going to just provide that massive amount of zone control with the gravity field and chaos storm for when they start sieging towers. Yep, I, I actually like the victor pick more than I liked the Malzahar pick. And the Malzahar pick drew a ban that was forced later on, so I mean, that's, that's nice for Hypebot. Yep. So we're waiting to see what T2 is going to finish out their comps with. Fiddlesticks and Brolov. I don't like their team. Um, I feel like it's split into several different directions. Um, so big, big things uh, for, for why I don't like it is you have, um, you have split pushers, but then you are lacking in, in wave clear. Um, the only like really wave clear you have is you have a little bit from the Tristana and a little bit from Fiddlesticks. However, both of those have fairly low range um, and by themselves will not necessarily be able to clear out a wave, which means it's going to be very difficult for T2 to be able to split push with that Fizz and, and Olaf. You know, both of them are incredibly strong split pushers. They do have some of, some of that team fight, but um, it just feels really split out. You know, there's not as much CC that Fiddlesticks wants to be able to, to do the ult. Yeah. You know, maybe if the fish catches onto someone, but generally, you know, once the fish hits someone, everyone else is going to be pretty good at just letting it hit that one person. You know, you'll have the, the Scion ult, which could potentially get something to set, set that up. But there's, I don't feel like T2 has uh, synergy for, for making... Um, for making plays. Yeah, I, I think synergy is the best, is the most important word of what you said there. Because I think really what's lacking for T2 here is they don't really seem to have a common objective in their comp. It, it really reminds me of a solo queue comp. People kind it of really does. picked around, oh, I'm good at this champion, I like this champion. But in games at this high level, that unless you just absolutely crush lane phase, that's not going to do enough. Yeah, and that's that's where this is is going to be decided. Um, like, I mean, admittedly, like but, they'll, but they'll, they'll have it's, the it's, split it's... push advantage. Like, Fizz is really hard to stop in a split push. Olaf is really hard to stop in a split push, and none of the four people that they have now are going to be able to duel either of those two. Right, and they do have that that strong early game pressure um oh ravenite picking up the top yep. and as we oh, sort I of guessed it. the nautilus is going to support this game and tom kench is going to the top lane where he can be king of the river and so this this is also um you know with some of the the fiddlesticks being able to i feel six has is mostly poke so i'm not sure how much i like the nautilus into that but but that said, is you know, Fiddlesticks. A lot of the power comes from some of that drain, which Nautilus will be able to stop. Um, but so, so wind conditions here. You know, we have a similar wind condition for Hypebot, where they are looking for team fights for uh, sieges and using that two power, or um, or yeah, the, the the two damage dealers to push down. Uh, have massive amounts of wave clear and shove into towers um, to win. And team two, simply because they have that more YOLO Q style team comp, um, they are going to need to win laning phase. If right. they do not win lane phase, they will lose this game. I um, absolutely agree with you. Um, I mean, that being said, uh, Jungle Sign is a particular specialty of Tempest Life, right? Just lost you on comms. Oh, sorry. Uh, uh, can you still hear me? Yeah, yeah, you're back. Okay. Back. Jungle Scion is a particular specialty of Tempest Life, right? Uh, I believe so. And Jungle Scion can be strong. Um, and, and actually, I like this more than than a Jungle Olaf, simply because the Olaf has more. Um, I feel more lane pressure for getting those kills, especially you know you get the Scion coming out of the jungle. It's the CC. Uh, the Olaf, you know, being in a lane has the possibility for getting more gold, um, and those solo laners are going to be the ones with the potential to do that split pushing. Uh, so I'd like to see Tempest Life focus on getting one of those two lanes ahead, 
um, so that that land can be that consistent, you know, split push threat that if anyone from Hypebot has to go deal with, you know, they have the, the possibility to get those kills. Yep. Because Fizz and Olaf, phenomenal duelers. Uh, the, the one thing to be aware of, though, for, for Olaf is I feel that uh, Red Side has a fair amount of mobility. You know, Gragas is able to, to jump around. Um, you know, the, the damage dealers are a bit more, more stationary, um, but they're not going to be the ones that are going to be wanting to deal with the split push. Yeah, that's going to want to be um, Tom Kench, who... Uh, really just doesn't care about the damage you deal to him. Um, or possibly the Gragas. Um, and I feel both of those are going to be fairly tanky, and uh, the Gragas will have decent wave clear. Tom Kench will, will have a little more trouble with that. Um, but that's how I see what, what Hypot's answer is to the possibility of uh, if, and only if, if the Olaf and Fizz get fed. Yep. Um, so you said, what, uh, 35 minutes last game, if it goes that long, that Hypebot was going to have a large advantage? Yeah. I, I feel like this game's even worse. I feel like if this game's at all close at 25, this game's over, if not 20. I, w I would say closer to 20. Um, if, if T2 is not up, um, you know, their, their comp is based around, they have an early game power spike. As well as you know, combine that with um, the sort of Yolku aspects of their team is they have to win early. If they do not win early, they will lose this game, unless of course Hypebot throws. But um, you know, one of the things I really like about how Carlton has approached the the draft is he did a lot of of in houses. Um, so everyone take notes if you're planning to participate in the Grumble next year is making sure to do a lot of in houses. Find which people are willing to play a lot and are available a lot. And he specifically picked around that, um, not just on skill level on paper, but be based on people that he knew. He he had an idea of what they the. Um, he was getting into with picking them on a team as well as knowing that he can work with them. So making sure that you're, you're finding a team that is willing to practice, um, that you understand their play styles and that, you know, you can create a team of, of that mesh play style. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think Cyber Sage is probably one of those people who's played more games with people than Google than just about anyone else. Right. Like I, oh, well, I think I at least of the captains. You know, yeah, he's I, made a very very intentional about doing that. I, I think of the high Elo Google players though, I mean like I've played some with a lot of people, but I can't think of anyone I've played even half as many games with as I have with Cyber Sage. Right. And I'm obviously not even someone that was being scouted for champions. <sighs> But it's it's getting those in houses, which which gives a lot of information because and let's be honest, the riot rankings are uh, a little bit wonky. So Gabby, tell us how you really feel about the riot rankings. I am salty. It's okay. I'm and salty. By salty. You mean silver one? I'm I'm salty. <laughs> Go away, gold five. Golds are not allowed in this channel. <laughs> Only silver one and below. Yeah, going from, you know, I'm plot one in solo queue, you know, in the uh, the AHGL ninth place out of uh, 80 or so teams, demoted to silver one. That, that, was, that was some insult it's to okay. injury right there. I was on the AHGL ninth place out of like 80 teams, and I was demoted <laughs> to stop. silver three. Shh, shh, stop it! <laughs> You're ruining my narrative. Okay, you're right. You're right. You 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 helped us a lot with uh with with uh, analysis. Uh, with team with those those two practices oh, that I went to. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but you were there. You were on that team. That's you, right. You I was an integral cog. I have heard people call me a cog. Admittedly, Ma? it was me. But <laughs> I have heard people say it. Right. Well, and let's be honest. Word search would not have been the same without you. Absolutely. So we, we, are, we were happy to have you on the team. Okay, so we have 50 seconds before we go into the game. Um, so we've talked about win conditions, um, some of the team comps. So it's one of the things um, I really enjoy watching uh, Raven Knight play Tom Kemsch. Um, he 
Uh, he and CyberSage have had some disagreements in the past uh, about its effectiveness. Um, <laughs> however, I've, I've seen him, him use it to great strength. He loves playing it a lot in, in solo queue, um, as well as just in a number of the, the Google games. And the thing that I really like about it is, is the, the just tank pressure where he becomes this unkillable force that with the ult is able to move across the map um, and and then part of how I like with how he's played is he has a really good reaction time. So, you know, in case of some of the things like, you know, Fizz Alt um, or, you know, uh, a Fiddlesticks coming down, being able to scoop up one of the, the hyper carries for Hype Bond. Um, I, is, I predict is that Sage... he's going to do that two or three times this game. Yep, I would not be surprised. Is Cyber Sage not a fan of Tom Kench? Uh, at first, I think he's he's grown to like it, um, okay. but I, I, I saying... remember some rather colorful conversation. Yeah, if 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 Cyber Sage, I guess if he didn't like it now, he he wouldn't want it to be played. And, I'll say because uh, I've he, I've seen both Ravenite and Targan play a lot of top lane Tom Kench. Okay, I haven't seen seen Targon play it, but I Tar definitely Tar know Ravenite loves it. Targon has been playing it. a lot of it in their ranked team and a lot of it in normals that he's been playing with the team and with other Googlers. Okay. In fact, it's I think Singed and Tom Ketch are the only champions I've seen Targon play recently when I've played with him. Okay. And I mean, like to his credit, Targon clearly made a great emphasis this Grumble and widening out his champion pool. And I feel like he's done a great job. And I think I mean, it's I think it's been really great last game. Yeah, I think it's been really helpful for Hypebot. Like, he's not someone who needs to be the strongest pillar and carry of this team, so if they can plug him in as just a solid player, they're going to be in a great position. Yep. Alright, so Hypebot is moving into the blue side top jungle, obviously uh, as a team. Meanwhile, Team 2 is trying to set up an ambush in the bottom side jungle that Hypebot is not are. going for. And they are going to be losing out on a lot of vision. Let's see, Will... Oh, Cyber should have been spotted out by that. So yeah, I should yeah, have, that, sorry, that's, I should have that's switched my uh, vision fast enough. I didn't see if they could see him or not. Yeah, uh, they could see him. But, yep, so they, they, they could it on Q. They They're the invading onto the blue to get that wards down, those wards down there. Oh, are we going to get a cheese brush? Nope, they're just going to fall back and clear together and make sure the top side is. So I would expect a lane swap uh, from Hypebot. It looks like we're going to be trying to take control of the top half of the jungle. Um, and, and personally, I think a lane swap would be really, really smart for Hypebot here too. Like, if they look at the right. team comps, all they really have to do is survive the laning phase in a decent shape, and they're going to be a heavy, heavy favorite to win that game. It's much harder to fall drastically behind in a lane swap than it is in a lane because they're just not in positions where they can kill you over and over. Right. Well, and the other thing is, if you look at the the top laners, um, you know, Tom Kench um, is fairly tanky. is going to be difficult to dive, uh, and doesn't need to rely on getting that heavy amount of farm to become relevant as transitions into the game. Whereas the Olaf, you know has a lot more damage but is a lot squishier and is going to have some trouble you know breaking freezes and really requires that gold in order to do well um transitioning into the late game and to further add to it actually i think if you look at the mid laners and while admittedly that well so if you look at the mid laners i think victor is a much easier to gank mid laner than fizz is yeah um, but uh hype bots coming down no i'll possibly, say they're, they're or they might be going for the blue. they're going for sushi um not yet. It's uh, it's it's too early to to go for that kind of dive. Oh, Gotta let them push out. So what I think they're gonna do is they're gonna go for the blue, uh, possibly one more, and then they have two options. Um, either Victor bounces this mid wave and it starts pushing out, draws that fizz out, and they can go for the gank there. Um, and if that doesn't happen in time, they have the option where they can collapse four man um, onto that top turret and get that down. Um, very quickly, and it looks like they are opting to go for the top turret, go for that assured gold, and Archaeotics is just going to walk away from that that fiddle ganks. And Ravenite going back to pick up all the farm that Pure MJ uh, graciously delivered to that tower. But I mean, yeah, one one of the underrated 
aspects about lane swaps is it really sort of neutralizes the jungler's effect on the oh, early game. Oh, teleporting. Liam is in position for a dive here. They looks like they are going to be going in onto Preslus. Hook also goes down. Going Headborn is going to be getting oh. is tanking the aggro quite well. Nice stay right at the edge. Let's uh, Gragas get that first blood, and it looks like then they are going to be able to to get tower damage onto that with Jinx there and that massive wave. I will be surprised if they uh, they don't uh, get that tower as well. And so, on the other side, actually, while that was going on, uh, T2 tried to dive the Tom Kench and Ravenite, but Ravenite was able to dodge the was able to see it coming and then dodge the Scion E with his flash and was able to get out essentially unharmed. And so they may be able to match the tower here. But... Yeah, they will. They will match the tower, but First Blood does go over to Hypebot. So However, trying with to let this uh, current positioning, um, T2 does have. Uh, initiative on Dragon. Unfortunately, Tristan is being a little bit slow in transitioning over, but um, with the Jinx Nautilus this still in the is... top lane, and they don't know it, but Gragas is totally not there to contest, so this is going to be T2's Dragon. Um, and getting this Dragon this early in the game does enable the possibility for that, you know, fifth Dragon win condition that we, we weren't able to see last game. Yep. Although I would be surprised if even... 18 minutes forward into this game. Either well, the game what, is what they over need to do, or... if they can keep that early game power, you know, for the next 10 minutes, you know, they're even on gold there. They're a little bit behind, um, but it's in it's in such a way that they can use the uh, innate power of their champions in the early game to stay in this um, and get the next two dragons. Yep. If they can't do that. Um, they won't have that kind of pressure, but if they do, that keeps that fifth dragon win condition for them on the table. Yep, I'm 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 just more worried about the. Oh, we have a fight down though, mid lane. Going in deep, Archaeotix is going to be able to get some good trade onto the Fizz. Yeah, is this not is able this to get is a little bit return. of a rough lane for the Fizz to play if the Victor does well, and Archaeotix oh, Victor man. is very good. Oh man, those death rays are just destroying Fizz. And I don't know if you saw it in the bottom, but uh, the bottom lane for Team 2 was trying to recall. And yeah, and they were uh, able to get in and stop the recalls, and so they're now up a pickaxe to a Doran's Blade, and they're forcing Tristan to either stay Ooh. in or lose a ton of farm here. So this is a really nice advantage that Hypebot's taking here. Ravenite going for the. Gets and the Nom! There goes the Olaf. No ult, so uh, Preslus going down. Again. I was saying this is going disastrously for T2 so far. Yeah, this this is uh, one one point two k down. Um, they do have the dragon, but that's that's not much this early game. Elio going in hard on our chaotix. Nice flash away from the death ray. Uh, but oh, the chaos storm goes down, and Elio with most of the CC, however, not going to be enough damage to finish off that phase. So. I'm Both actually surprised that Archaeotics held on to that Chaos Storm for so long. Uh, the only thing uh, I no, can think no, of... that, that makes perfect sense. Uh, what Archaeotics is waiting for is for the Troll Pole to, to go down, because as so long as that's up, it's very easy for Fizz to right. escape a from that Chaos Storm. Absolutely, but he used the Troll Pole to go in to close on him, which is also why Fizz got stunned by the Gravity Field. And so what right. I would have expected there is as soon as the gravity field went down that the Chaos Storm also would have gone down and he would have been stunned in the Chaos Storm. Because right. Fizz, Fizz used all of his clothes to get in on the victor there. and But he did have that great flash, so I'm not sure if that was predicted by Archaeotix. If it was, that was absolutely phenomenal play. Um, but yeah, I'm not sure. Because with that flash, if the Chaos Storm had gone down he would have been able to flash out. So either either great luck, because you know, having the Chaos Storm um, on a champion without those mobility, you know, both the flash down and the troll pull means you get the full damage. Unfortunately, Fizz was not low enough at that point. Anyways, back yep. to where we are. All right, so um, Tempest Hi Life is having to come in to relieve this bottom lane. This is smart by them to make sure they got this recall off because Nautilus is very, very close to six and it would have been diving and time. And good hook onto the... In fact, it's going to be diving time anyway. Oh, that's, oh, oh, that's a nice flash, flash but Cyber Sage is going to... in deep. Still enough health. is going to be able to run out Jinx without gets a excited. problem. Scion gets Unicorn rooted. Unicorn is just going to stop that and teleport Here comes the teleport in. from Olaf, 
who is six, so he could ghost in Ragnarok, and here it comes. But he's too far away. He's not. But gonna Nautilus be able to is get just gonna Batman this. hook out. He doesn't even need to Batman hook out, and that's a lot burn for one flash on Nautilus. Yup. That was that all is, of uh, Olaf's summoners down for Nautilus's flash. Fiddle's looking to get greedy, but can't pull anything out from it. So. 2k down when they needed to have that early game advantage. Um, this is looking a little grim for oh, T2 here. And those death those rays death are rays chunking. Are, those are... I, they're, they're hard to hit, but when they do, man, they just hit like a truck. Yeah, last night I almost got forced into playing Fizz against a Victor mid because they didn't realize I was playing oh, top lane. Oh, T-Scuzzy out of position. T-Scuzzy cut out, no ult. There's the Grog Assault, and Chaos Storm, And evaporated. Interestingly enough, did you know that the melting point of Fiddlesticks is actually lower than whatever Chaos Storm is? Because I'm pretty sure he disappeared as soon as that hit. You know, I think, I think you're right. That's an that's interesting observation there. Um, but what I think that can, we can we can infer from that is that the Chaos Storm has a, a higher temperature damage than the Death Ray. Um, so, you know, Chaos is hotter than fire. You know, that actually makes sense if you really think about it. Oh, and oh, here comes the all-in attempt. Good troll ball sitting on the edge, though. Oh, oh Elio walks right back into the ground. Elio ray. with the misplay. Good Liam, body block by I'll Liam and Hypog. Liam They're eats gonna, it. Stun's coming out onto Archaeotix, however, that's not quite enough damage to kill him. Um, and that will be two more kills over to Hypebot. Six to nothing. Oh, this, this is This game's this going is all painful. wrong for T2. I'll say Elio actually probably could have had that kill if he had managed to avoid getting stunned by the gravity field. But... Yeah, but, but walking back in, I mean, that's, that's the importance of positioning. Yep. It's, it's small little details that, that can make or break you. Or in this case, turn you into sushi. I mean, once again, we see that top lane for T2 has a slight advantage. They're up about... Okay, well, after uh, Cyber Sage took out the turret, he's only up about 100 gold, but... And granted, he's had to die twice for it. Yes, he has had to die twice for it, but he's got a 23 CS lead on the Tom Kench, and so, like, that'll be nice. He'll probably be able to duel the Tom Kench relatively effectively, especially once that Black Cleaver comes in that he's building. But... Right. It feels to me like it's going to be way too little, way too late. I agree. I mean, especially at this point, you know, both teams have this position on, on Dragon. It's going to be a, a contested one, but it's going to be difficult for Team 2 simply because of that, you know, 4,000 gold lead 11 minutes into the game. Yeah, I mean, if we look at this right now, uh, Victor has upgraded his Hex Core, which is um, obviously pretty nice. So I just want to jump nice. in. Sorry, um, go. Hypebot is seen. Uh, T Scuzzy back out, so they're going to be able to go for that dragon. They know they have the uh, the man advantage as well as the Tom Kench TP, um, so they have the the five v four and are able to secure that dragon um, based off of that back knowledge. And I mean, there goes any realistic hope of that five dragon threat. Yep, Elio going in deep. However, the rest of Hypebot is in on the side, and we have more sushi. Oh, and a Good. very in nice hook, although a very nice fear. reaction fear. Alright, we're going to see the first... Tristana. Oh, wow, Archaeotic survives. So one thing I, I was going to say before Hypebot did the dragon is, in addition to upgrading that Hex Core, Victor actually used his first buy on a Negatron Cloak, which we saw there when Fizz all in him and did not even get close to killing him. Right. It's actually a very, very nice pickup for him. And... T2 is unable to use the Victor back to get any real pressure. Victor's now finished his cooldown boots as well. Looks like he's got... Oh, no, that's still just the, the Mark II. And so Victor is just going to melt these waves. Yeah, Victor is phenomenally good at, at those wave play. You just launch the Death Ray with the, uh, the upgrade down the, the line, and that will... Do a significant chunk of damage. I believe the technical term is boom. <laughs> Check one. Not wrecked? Wrecked? Tyrannosaurus wrecked. I'm going to vote Tyrannosaurus wrecked on this one. 
Uh, I think that's correct. Let's uh, show him what he's won. Uh, it looks like he has won a one-way trip on the pain train. Indeed, but uh, that's going to have to wait till the next fight breaks out. Instead, we have Ravenite getting rid on Trustless. Going to have to pop the shield. Um, however, oh, Scion's coming in and... Pipe but for the Scion, it game. wasn't about the kill. It was about sending the message. Yep. However, Hypedot does a nice job of turning around this fight and is instead going to use it to take mid lane turret, which is going to widen their gold lead by approximately another 750. Yep, and are going to continue to keep pressure. Say, so, and I mean, um, one, one thing we killing. didn't note earlier and maybe should have is that the wave clear on Team 2 is really, really horrendous. Like right. Tristana well, obviously can clear out waves. Champion select is is they have very little wave clear, which makes it so that hype bot um, has a lot of that that siege potential. You know, because they have the wave clear from the victor, from the jinx. Plus, you know, jinx innately has a lot of tower killing capability. Yep, that's fair enough. And I think like I mean, if they had had a mid laner with a little more wave clear there, they probably could have stopped their T two their middle turret from going down. Right. Instead. The lead gets bigger and bigger. We're now approaching a 6,000 gold lead for Hypebot. Yeah, so I'm, I'm having trouble seeing uh, T2 get themselves back into this game. You know, they are down two turrets. They are even on dragons. Um, you know, I feel like this is going to require, at this point, a misplay from Hypebot. I don't see, you know, with, with the comp that they have, you know, they have really poor pick capabilities. Um, the only person that they really have that can do that is going to be Fizz. Um, so if, if Fizz can get a pick onto Victor or Jinx, they have a, a possibility. But that is going to require Hypebot misplaying their vision and having Victor or Jinx going in on an unsafe path. And I don't think that's going to happen. Yeah, I agree with you. I, I, I don't see the road back. Like, I, I think we see the same chances they have to get back, but I don't see Hypebot making the mistakes necessary to get T2 back in this game. Right. And unfortunately, a lot of this stemmed from you know, TT not able to use that superior dueling capability in the early game uh, to transition that into kills. I think one thing I would have really liked to have seen from T2 is rather than trying to set up that sort of cheesy little death rush, if they had gotten in and gotten some deep wards in an attempt to make sure they could sniff out the lane swap and then make sure they counter it if necessary. I think that Well, they would did been... manage to see it because Hypebot did overextend. Um, I, mean, I feel like, so they know that Hypebot is going to be aggressive. Um, I feel like they took a gamble onto which side the invade was going to be happening, and they just chose poorly. That, that, there was a little bit of, of bad luck in that. Okay, that's fair enough. I, I, I still would have, I think, liked to see T2 actually be a little more aggressive than they ended up being. I don't think Olaf's winning this oh, one. Oh, nope. Nom, 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 nom. Delicious. It's that, that nice beer-flavored man that the fish really love. Yeah, you, know, you have beer-battered fish. Nope, this time it's beer-battered man. Yup. And if Fizz keeps getting killed, it's soon going to be fish-battered beer. Oh, my. Oh. Wow. The Wombo and Chaos Storm absolutely so chunks them that out. Yup. That would have been a great fiddles alt, but Hypebot is just so far ahead. Uh, and it looks like they're going to be pushing in. They take the outer. They're going to start to get pressure on that inner. There's three people down. No real strong wave clear for Team 2. Prussels gets stuck in the gravity field. And that's going to be an inhibitor tower down at 18 minutes. In the bot lane again, like we saw last game. So we have, we have a theme here. If you're playing against Hypebot, watch out for those... 18 minute bot lane uh, inhibitor towers. Honestly, just find a way to get them on Howling Abyss. There's no bot lane for them to take there. <laughs> that is, that may be the one hope that teams have of taking down Hypebot. <laughs> Hypebot, please give us that free low advice. So, second dragon will be secured uh, uncontested for Hypebot. They will get the, that extra tower damage for continuing to, to push down lanes. 
Um, and now they're going to be able to spend that massive amount of gold that they've just got. So, uh, next things I expect to, to see them starting to contest around um, will be the, the last inner turret that Hypod has left to pick up, as well as I could see them potentially uh, going for that 20 minute immediately spawning Baron. Um, they are, you know, 10 or now 8k ahead. Uh, which means that any fights that, that break out, they will have an enormous advantage over. You know, in addition to at... the advantage they already have from the team comp and team fighting. Right. And you can look at Jinx. Uh, she's nearly a full item up on, on Tristana. You know, upgraded boots and the zeal. Um, you know, mid lane, we have a completed item and the start of a second item on Victor. And uh, Fizz has even components. finished his Lich Bane. Yeah, so it's, it seems like each each person is you know, half an item to a full item up on on their counterparts. So any any kind of, of fight over neutral objectives, Hypebot is going to be wanting to look for. And as long as they can stay together, they'll be they'll be fine. And meanwhile, they're trying to make sure Nautilus they get. Nautilus going in deep. Gravity storm is going to stop that out. However, Tempest Life is going to go in hand, but Ooh. that means that they are going to. He gets the victor, but unfortunately easy. they're just too far behind. Yeah, the, it's it's that tank problem where it's you're you're that front line, but your DPS is several seconds behind. Archaeal is able to get a lot of damage out. And the um, fish fizz, whiffed. The rocket will whiff as well, um, but that is three down, four team two. So it looks like. Uh, Hypebot is going to start on the Baron, trying to utilize so that Jinx damage a, and tank ability a Jinx from, from damage, Hypebot. Yep. I would say they've got a massive front line here, so they can tank this Baron out all day. Elio getting chunked down is not going to be able to uh, play on the river anymore. Victor's Chaos Storm can't finalize the kill, but at least he manages to frighten Fizz off. And, it, and the result, a 2040 Baron. Yep. Extending a 11,000 11 gold lead. At 20 nearing, minutes. Nearing 50% more gold than Team 2. Uh, I, I feel this game is, is pretty much over. Yup. At this point, I'm not sure that Team 2 would win a 5-man dive under the Nexus turret in a 5v5. I'd agree with that. So, how I think to see this happening is... Um, they're going to give Victor the blue, since he'll have that mana for being able to sustain, and then just group five push win. Yep. Um, oh, possibly, yeah, Tom Ketch can do the, the split push. Uh, as we've seen, he's now able to 1v1 the Olaf, um, and the rest of them can just provide that four-person split pressure. Fizz, unfortunately, misses the ult onto Jinx. And it's going to be a long cooldown. Oh, the wolf denies Nautilus from being able to pick up the most Tristana hook. Fiddles is hoping to be able to get an ultimate, however, uh, an ultimate over the jungle wall would not be able to be followed up by the rest of the team, and would just end up in a dead Scarecrow. Did you see where Olaf just tried to teleport to? No, I did not. Like, I saw the teleport come in, but I didn't see the target, but... Fizz, no matter what happens. That's a lot of damage, and there is... Oh, T-Scuzzy flashes away, he'll be able to make it out of the fight. Um, but that's still one person down for T2, so Hypebot is going to be pushing in, and Tom Kench is already Meanwhile, on the inhibitor. In so that's the dead, dead inhibitor, and I don't think that T2 has the wave clear to stop this tower take. Uh, next wave comes in, and that will be another tower for Hypebot. I was saying, if any of these hooks hit their kills coming. There goes the Scion. Gragas doesn't go down in response, but the Olaf goes down as well. And two for one is definitely worth it, especially with these Baron minions. And Jinx is still up, which is that tower killing threat. And the Victor's still up. And, and Victor's Kent's barrier is almost back up taking too. Taking out the Fizz and keeping those Baron minions on the Nexus turret. Bottom one is down to half health. And Jinx and Victor will be able to take this top inhibitor down while both Tristana and Fiddlesticks are required to deal with this uh, Tom Kench pressure on the Nexus turrets. I think the only question at this point is, will someone disconnect the entire Hypebot team and give T2 a chance to come back? 
Well, if Hypebot does dis get disconnected, that's going to be eight minutes before they can come back in and provide us with dank memes and good information. So, I, I suppose what we're saying is Ocelot, please. No <laughs> DDoS Arena. Hypebot looks to be going down to position themselves around Dragon and just pick that one up for free, because why not? I, I am entertained. Uh, Hypebot wants to make sure no one leaves the top side of T2's base without them knowing. There's uh, a lot of vision coverage there. But it looks like they are going to be. But if you to get actually look at it, there's actually a hole in their vision. If you sneak around to the right by the mid tower and then cut through the base gate, you can get out of that undetected. Meanwhile, Fizz is dying to Gragas. Rocket misses, flashes over the death ray. Liam's coming in barrel with authority, a as they say in NBA Jam, from downtown, and the dragon is going no, that, down. No, that was a dunk. He, he dove right in, tossed the ball right on top. So There's here's no a here's a basketball end. rules question, and I know it's impossible in real life, but I'm I feel like NBA Jam would have something like this. If you dunk from outside the three point line. Like, if you take off from behind the three-point line and dunk, is it a two-pointer or a three-pointer? I think you have to both jump and land behind it, but I'm not sure. No, it's where the ball is released, so if you dunk, it's still two points. Sorry. Oh, oh. Archaotix rudely denies the assist from Nautilus. Just and looks Sith at Phil Six and cuts him off. And streams of the, the epic dunks. I'll make All my right. own sport. And we have every single inhibitor down. Well, the oh, fish James. lands on James. Oh, and there we go. And Tom, Tom Kent. We're now up to Heels. one out of three, Gabby. Oh, man. We're going to need some Tom good Kent. eats at the end of this game. <laughs> I don't think we're going to be making it that hard. Tom Kent has just been uh, living on his own island. I would say I, I think this game has about 15 seconds left to live. And popped one right after the another. All right, Three I down, said 15 four, two, seconds two. at 45. Oh, come on, Hypebot, stop BMing. Make me look better. They are not going to be able to get the ace, but they will be able to get the Nexus. And the Fiddle Hypebot Fiddlesticks begging Hypebot for one more finals. chance, but Hypebot has no mercy. And, and Hypebot. Hypebot becomes one of the teams to the finals. I assume the first team to make it to the finals? Well, it's the first I know about, so that's all that matters, right? Uh, that does seem to be all that matters. Alright, well, I'll zoom. it's been a pleasure casting with you. So, yep, you too, A couple Gabby. of interesting yeah, bloodbathy yeah, games, fine, and okay. um, look forward to seeing Hypebot in the finals. Yep. Take care.